Welcome to Tiny Epics. If you're a fan of Greek mythology, then you've come to the right place. This episode is all about the goddess Hera, the queen of Mount Olympus, who has been brilliantly captured in this painting by the artist Ferdinand Max Brett in 1909. What I really love about this image is the swagger that Hera has. She unapologetically takes up space, daring you to meet her powerful gaze. There is something defiant about her, and she wears a diadem with lots of bling just to remind you who's boss. It's a celebration of female strength. Another detail in the painting is that Hera holds a mirror in her hand, normally a symbol associated with Aphrodite, goddess of sexual love and beauty. Hera is often described as vain, but in this painting she's not looking at herself, and the mirror can also be seen as a symbol of wisdom, reflection, and self-knowledge. The peacock, the animal she's most often associated with these days, sits at her feet. It's worth mentioning, though, that the peacock was not originally associated with Hera at all. It was a later addition, since it's said by some that the peacock wasn't known to the Greeks until the conquests of Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC. Hera proudly bares her breasts in this painting without a trace of shame, just like a strong Minoan queen. She reminds me of that snake priestess figurine discovered at the palace of Knossos on Crete, and according to some scholars, such images can be traced back to a long line of great prehistoric earth goddesses going back tens of thousands of years. The artist calls our attention to her breasts with a large pendant that rests between them, which makes a lot of sense, because Hera's original function, long before Zeus came into the picture, was as a powerful fertility goddess. If we take a look at Hera's family tree, we see that her grandmother is Gaia, the primordial personification of Mother Earth herself. So, if Hera was originally worshipped as a supreme fertility goddess without a husband, why was she later rewritten by the poets as Zeus's mostly unhappy and incredibly frustrated wife? I think you'll find the answer to this question kind of mind-blowing. The classical scholar Jane Ellen Harrison wrote that Hera originally reigned alone at Argos, at Samos, and that her temple at Olympia is distinct from and far earlier than that of Zeus's. After the fashion of a conquering chieftain, Zeus takes Hera as his bride, a daughter of the land. In Olympus, Hera seems merely the jealous and quarrelsome wife. In reality, she reflects the turbulent native princess, coerced but never really subdued by an alien conqueror. She seems to be saying that the myth of Hera and Zeus is based on a powerful real-life queen or lineage of queens who represented a matrilineal system thousands of years before the classical Greeks, and who was made subordinate to the new king in town, perhaps an invader from northern lands. Likewise, religion would have shifted from female, earthbound worship to a patriarchal worship, featuring a domineering god who lays down the law from the sky. I'll leave you with one more quote, this time from an essay by someone named Catherine Lynch. She wrote, the Olympian deities gained supremacy at the expense of the Chthonic earth deities like Hera, who suffered a loss of power in order to present less of a threat to Zeus's reign. Chthonic relates to the earth, agriculture, and the underworld, by the way, in contrast to the Oronic, or sky gods like Zeus. We'll get into the details of Chthonic and Oronic deities and how they often overlap in another episode, but I just wanted you to know about this distinction. Lynch goes on to write, In marrying Zeus, Hera becomes bound to a sky god who attaches himself to her as a way of controlling her and her powers. In the end, for all her rage and rebellion, for all her creative powers and feminine fertility, the dominant image of Hera that has been passed on to the modern day is that of a vengeful wife, subordinate to her husband and jealous of his authority. But after studying Hera's worship prior to the 8th century BC and prior to the rise of Homeric epic tradition, it seems clear that Hera rebels against Zeus and his Olympian pantheon out of a desire to regain her former glory as a fertility goddess and to assert her own majesty. 
I think we have plenty to talk about in the comments, so I will stop here for now. What are your thoughts on the ideas presented in this video? Let's get the discussion going. And if you want to be notified when future videos are released, be sure to subscribe and turn the bell notification on. As always, F. Haristopoli, thank you so much for watching.